digital objects are becoming valuable. People are investing in digital objects that exist in games like Minecraft or, or Fortnite. Uh, people are actually buying things that don't exist. They're, they're digital objects. And if we see how that's impacting entertainment, in the last couple of months, Fortnite had a concert with uh, DJ Marshmallow, and I think they had 400 million or 200 million people watching a virtual concert simultaneously. It's the largest single spectator event we've ever seen in the history of time. So that's also another really interesting area from, a, from an investment perspective. Um, one of the companies that, that, that we like there is, is called Activision Blizzard. Um, they have around 500 million users uh, playing their games. Um, so they have, they have about seven games that generate over a billion dollars in revenue each year. So um, they've got quite a, quite a strong presence, to say the least. Um, and just on Fortnite, they had the Fortnite World Cup recently. Um, so Fortnite has 250 million registered players, and they had 40 million players participate in the, the, the rounds leading up to the tournament. And the tournament was eventually won by a 16-year-old gamer from the, the US called Carl Giersdorf, and he took home $3 million in prize money. This is more than the, the winner of Wimbledon took home. So, so the gamers, a 16-year-old gamer is actually getting paid more now uh, for winning a, a, a tournament, or, uh, which is just, it's quite astounding. Last year, I think, um, in terms of consumer spend, 74% of that in app stores was towards gaming. So these are large numbers that uh, we have to participate in. This is a, a strong theme, and we are, it's going to continue. The growth is going to uh, continue. Mu music, on, music in games is worth more than the physical music industry itself. So maybe we can end off on a little bit of a light note. This is something that Nick liked to bring in. He first showed me this, this uh, picture and asked me who it was, and I didn't have a clue. Um, <laughs> But apparently it's a, it's a bit of an old picture, so he wasn't too surprised yeah. that I perhaps didn't recognize her. But the bottom line of all of this is that now that we've got the robots uh, doing all our work for us, we're hungry for content, and content equals platforms. And so that's why we have the likes of Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, um, Snapchat, and the list goes on. And, uh, you know, this is very powerful. This is where the digital advertising comes in. So about 50% of all advertising spend now by companies is directed to, towards the internet. And this is gonna increase over time. So you'll, in the next five years or so, you'll see this increase to about 60, 70%. Um, you know, companies know that this is where they need to focus their attention. And Kylie Jenner, who's part of the, the Kardashian clan, she's got 145 million followers on, on Instagram. And she used the platform to, to build her business. Um, Kylie Cosmetics. Um, what she tells her followers to buy, they buy. Um, it's uh, now a billion dollar company, making $300 million a year in sales. If she releases a new product, it usually sells out with, uh, within 10 minutes or so. Um, so that just gives you the idea of how powerful these, these platforms are. And they're also very attractive from an investment perspective. Um, they are highly profitable. Um, you know, cash generative. So I, I think that that's also why we, you know, we're in the likes of the Amazons, the Googles, um, uh, for example, because they just have that reach and they just continue getting the subscription revenue in. Thomas, we mentioned it with the online buying and the, the interesting company called Switch, uh, St Stitch Fix. Um, but here's an example of global e commerce and where the sort of five year growth rates from end of last year going forward for the next five years lie. I mean, this is 70% growth in China, US below that. Um, so this is where this on, these online platforms, as Nick was saying, uh, the example of, of Kylie, Kylie Jenner is benefiting um, from these online interconnected or connected level of being able to connect to people globally. Amazon recently had their, their annual Prime Day event and over 175 million items uh, were sold. So they sold a million toys, 100,000 laptops, and 200,000 uh, TVs on the day. So this was the biggest shopping event in their history. And then Alibaba, they also have their annual event. It's called Alibaba Singles Day. Um, that actually makes that seem tiny. So that brought in a th about $31 billion in sales in one day. That's the same as the market cap of Anglo-American in one day of sales. 
So that just puts you into perspective the amount of money going through these, these systems and why they're so powerful from an advertising. It's very targeted advertising because they know what the people are going to buy and what they want to buy. So the adverts that pop up, and you've already seen it with Take A Lot, when you start going to other websites, all of a sudden the stuff that you've been looking for on Take A Lot starts popping up on the, on the other website. Um, so you know, be careful what you're searching for on Take A Lot because <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know what might pop up. You're probably hearing more and more about uh, how you were talking about something and suddenly you went online and an ad popped up for exactly that thing. And there's this vast sense of a conspiracy theory that they are listening to us. Well, they are. But that's because you're giving them permission to listen to you. If you think that every Android phone and every Apple phone in the world today has a voice assistant, on Apple it's Siri, on uh, an Android phone it's Google Assistant, and generally speaking, by default, you've enabled those apps. And the idea is that the app will activate when you use the wake word uh, for the app. So if you have an Amazon Alexa device, you've got to say Alexa, and then Alexa say, uh, Alexa's blue um, light starts spinning to say that she's listening to you. But for her to actually hear you say Alexa, she has to be listening all the time. And that applies to Google Assistant and Siri as well. They have to be listening all the time in order to hear the wake word. Allegedly, or they claim, or they did claim in the past, that it's only when the wake word was heard that it would start actually recording or listening or uploading your uh, query. But in fact, uh, what you find is that they use humans to take samples of all submitted uh, voice in order to optimize their ability to recognize uh, what you're saying. And um, both uh, Google and Apple have uh, admitted this in the last few weeks and have said um, they'll now um, ask people to opt into this program. It won't be done automatically. But wh what this is telling you is that voice is becoming uh, the next big interface. They talk about data being the new oil. Well, we believe voice is going to be uh, the new oil. And they're talking now about conversational commerce, where you make purchases using your voice. So for a lot of people, they, they're using voice for search and for instructions to their phones. But over time, it's going to start becoming the interface for making purchases as well. It's also seen as the way to bring illiterate people or people who have difficulty uh, reading, if they have visual impairments, for example, to be able to re-enter um, the world of financial inclusion and of e-commerce by using uh, their voices. Somebody's so, listening. <laughs> um, if I say, hey, Google. No. <laughs> check your phones. Off your Switch phones off. will probably have uh, lit up. But uh, yeah, so. Hey, hey, Google is going to have a dollar sign uh, behind it in, in the future. Look out for conversational commas. It's a big uh, new trend um, at the moment. Um, and all the big tech companies, all the big platforms we've talked about are experimenting in one way or another with using voice as an, an interface for e-commerce. What I'd like to leave you with is, first of all, a couple of, a couple of things. One is how we're interacting with, with the guys, the specialists, the experts in the industry that are working with these uh, technology, those that are influencing people and businesses, getting an understanding of how they're being used, um, how they're generating growth for businesses, which businesses are benefiting most, which are be using them the most, um, and which ones we can invest in uh, on a global scale. That's the first part. And then secondly is that uh, those structural trends, just to reinforce them, they're, they're extremely important. Uh, that growing population is not something that's going to unfortunately go away. The aging population is something that we have to deal with, and the technology and the advancement thereof is going to enable us to handle it better. Um, and the education component for, for that younger group to come through, to be able to support that aging population is crucially important as well. I think we're going to need the AIs to, for us to keep calm so that I can deal with my mom for much more, more years than what I perhaps initially thought I would have to. Um, and she lives with us. Uh, <laughs> Um, so having said that, these are some of the interesting trends globally that underpin our global strategy. Uh, this is what we are incorporating into uh, the discussions that we are having with the portfolio managers, the, the individuals that you are dealing with, 
and what we're incorporating into our, the, the global fund at the same time. So if you have any questions, please speak to your portfolio manager. Um, any more themes that you think we haven't touched on, let us know.